Okay, then let's start. Good evening to all of you. It's midday here in Germany. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for um, being there, doing that, for inviting me. Thank you, Lokesh, and thank you, Gansham, for setting this all up. Uh, I do hope that you can all see me as, uh, and not only see me, but also hear me properly. Um, I've been invited to talk here today uh, because I've worked extensively on Uttarakhand. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Karin Polet. I'm a German anthropologist working at Tübingen University, which is a big university in a very small town in the south of Germany. Um, and uh, before uh, I've become uh, a staff member of a German university, I spent uh, many, many years in Uttarakhand, uh, while it was still called uh, Uttaranchal, uh, and did my uh, research there, my anthropological research. I, I wrote two books uh, about the area. Uh, one of them hasn't, hasn't been published yet, but the one about the uh, women has been published uh, quite a while ago. It's called Women of Honor. I began my research in Uttarakhand 18 years ago, I just looked it up, 18 years ago, and I've been connected to uh, the movement of that has then become, been there, doing that ever since then, ever since my first time in India in 2002. Um, when I first moved to Srinagar Galwal to learn Hindi, uh, and then uh, to a small village near Norti called Duptoli, I got to know uh, some of the people who have uh, later become the founders of um, been there doing that. Uh, but I didn't really know a lot about India. I didn't know the language. So um, I learned Hindi in Srinagar Gadwal. There also from a, from a woman, a very impressive woman who decided never to get married because she decided to become uh, a Sanskrit scholar at the university. Um, and then I moved to a small village near Norti called Duptoli. During this first field work I did, um, I've mostly worked with people from low caste, Choti Jati Ke Logon Se Abad Karni Te. And uh, the people who belonged to Jatis uh, called uh, Tamata, Loha, Mystery, uh, and Ruria mostly in Chamoli district, in the heart, what was then still called Uttaranchal at the border of Garwal and Kumaun. The first thing I learned was that women in Chamuli, especially those with similar economic backgrounds, which most of the people who live in the villages still have, mostly they're, <clears throat> to be honest, very poor, um, lovely people, but very, very poor. And they, uh, a lot of these people had a lot of common, especially the women, and that the jati mattered, of course, but it didn't matter that much because uh, women in Chamoli share that one kismet that they are women and they share the Orateki Sindigi. It's a very hard life. It's an honorable life as well, but it's a life that's, um, that is basically connected to work, hard work. So the women of that part of Gadwal are very hardworking people. They are the backbones of their families. They do most of the work in the fields. It is often said in Garwal that a house, house without a woman cannot survive. So, uh, Guzar Gaya, Ya Chali Gai, Dusri Shadi, Zarur Karna Karna, not me Chate Hell, can Zarur Karna Yeh. Kanki Bina or at Kuchni Chalta, Kuch Kamni Chalta or Puri Pariva Karabuzai. So you need women, the women are very important. Um, uh, they are important because they work hard, yet they also need to work hard to survive themselves. 
The women I worked with during all these years I spent in Galval were hardworking with a strong sense of honor connected to their hard work. The book is called Women of Honor because of that. Yet at the same time, the same women suffered from the hardships village life brought with it. Many of the families I worked with were very poor. And as the women I worked with came there as young Buaris, they were usually the last to eat. Many of the younger women were undernourished, tired, and often ill. Actually, during the first years I spent in Garwal, uh, because I worked with the very, very poor rural populations, uh, some of my few, some of my closest friends died during the time I spent there, and they weren't much older than I was. Uh, some died during childbirth. Some because they didn't get the medical attention they would have needed. Often the families didn't have the time or the money or the opportunity to go to good hospitals. Uh, and some of them died because of violence they faced um, from their own families. Sometimes because they weren't able to have a male child. Sometimes because they weren't satisfactory buraris. Sometimes uh, out of different reasons. It's basically poverty, uh, what I think that did this. So I learned from the women in Garwal that they taught their daughters to be hardworking and tough. Because of course, like um, everybody, like uh, all the families we know, uh, women loved their daughters and they wanted their daughters to survive and to be successful in their lives. And that meant to be able to work hard, uh, to be able to bear children, to bear at least one son, and for him to get married, to uh, keep uh, until he gets married himself, so they could finally relax and leave most of the work to their own boys. The girls and women um, I met in Garwal had a lived intimacy with the land. They, draw, they went to draw water from the streams. Uh, they were tending the food growing in the terraced fields. They were walking the paths into the forest so often that they knew every tree and rock on the way. This doesn't mean that they had a sentimental intimacy of Romans with the land, but they had a relationship to their land because their land was a source of life, like themselves, very much like their own bodies. And the land itself was felt to be alive, benevolent at times, uncanny at others because uh, it was also the house of all the not also the house of all the um, bumi devtas but also of uh, lots of spirits and uh, dangerous beings lived there um, the intimacy with the land affects always affects the women's everyday practice females tend the food that grows in the terraced fields that climbs the hills to cut grass and walk the paths so often that even the rocks become familiar. And it thus strengthens their relationship with the place. So the village for them and their land, and the extension of the lands and the fields they work on, is seen as an inside, a safe place, uh, and a place that uh, gives them protection. But when I talk about uh, the women of Garwal, uh, we need to talk about, I uh, need to distinguish between two perspectives of the woman. As the daughter-in-law, as the newcomer into a family, and the other is uh, the Dhyani. Uh, we call it in English the outmarried daughters, uh, the daughters of the village. And you are a daughter of the village even if you're very old, you're called a Dhyani. And that's a completely different relationship. So I'm going to focus on this for the first few minutes. Um, as I already said, as a Bwari, a daughter-in-law, a woman is hardworking. As a Dhyani, a woman is worshipped and has deep connections to the Bhumiyal Devtas of her own Maika. It's interesting that a lot of the women I talked to and met over the last 18 years uh, talked about their lives um, as if they started only at marriage. Toshadi ke baad life shuru hua. Kyon? 
जिम्मेदारी शादी के बाद शुरू हुआ है इसके पहले तो कुछ जिम्मेदारी नहीं था तो जिंदगी भी नहीं था चाइल्ड हुड वॉज अप्पी टाइम बट इट वॉज ऑल्सो इन सिग्निफिकेंट ओनली आफ्टर मैरिज टोल्ड मी दुमेन दैट दे टर्न इन टू सिग्निफिकेंट पीपल बिकॉज दे हैड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड दे कुड बिकम ऑनरेबल पीपल इन द सोरियाज इवन इफ दे सफर्ड ऑफ ऑल द थिंग्स आई सेट so why did they suffer the first years directly after marriage were uh, usually for garwali women quite turbulent le- years uh, in their lives because of all uh, because they need to leave uh, as you probably all are aware of um shaadi ke baad aurat apne pati ke tarivah ke sath rehte hai to it means that they have to leave their f- families their uh, parents families and they now have a new family and they have to leave their houses and go and live in a basically uh, in a family who they don't yet know and they all all these changes happen simultaneously and are actually quite scary uh it's a time of suffering for many tamuli women uh but it's also a time of opportunity because it's a time where they can show that they are hard working they can gain honor and status uh and they can make sure that they become powerful women later in their lives in the beginning uh, most women reported a lot of problems they faced in their uh, in their sorias they had to fight for their positions within village and family they had to struggle with loneliness they had to deal with their in-laws pressure regarding their ability to work and the fertility of their own bodies uh, so the fertility of their own bodies that's important kyunki um uh, aura chaadi ke baad to uh, bachcha chahiye bachcha hone hi hai bina bachcha to zindagi bilkul kuch it's not worth anything na to this is why you get married you have to have children they also had to find new friends and allies in new villages uh, and they had to handle new relationships with their husbands so the women assumed responsibility for their themselves and their families and they uh, told me a lot about uh, the difficulties they faced um there so quite a few of uh, conflicts happened um um but it's also as i said uh, uh, a change of identity and uh, a phase where people started building their own honors so what does it mean as a new bari a naya bari is no longer a daughter beti nahi hai abhi bari hai uh, iska kya matlab hai ki kaam karna hai Uh, after marriage a young bride should move to the house of her husband's parents i already said this uh the wedding did not only change her life but also the life of her marital family especially uh the other female members of her family the arrival of a new bride usually involves a change in the female hierarchies and responsibilities of a household during the first time after her marriage a new bride is not primarily considered to be a son's um to be the son's wife um or under the son's control but it should rather be uh, the bari is actually somebody who lives with her new mother-in-law and who uh, takes over responsibilities and mostly work in the household from her mother-in-law or from other married women of the household um I have a question should I uh, interrupt and take the questions just Lokesh if you could answer this Sargam ask a question well, I'm just going to answer this are there any local female deities in Chamuli It's a good question um Yes of course there are local deities um uh, for example there is uh, Nanda Devi um a very famous uh, local deity but you have different forms of the of the of the devi uh, residing in uh, in various temples uh, uh in chamoli uh, and all over uttarakhand uh, most of them actually go on pilgrimages 
um, every few years as well. Um, so if you look, there are different, um, we call them different groups of, um, of female deities uh, who usually do a, to have a ritual life that's very similar to, uh, to Nanda Devi's ritual lives. They also go, like the outmarried women, they go and visit their micas regularly. Um, yeah, so it's, they have all sorts of different different names, usually connected to Shiva and Parvati. Uh, and you'll find them nearly in every second village. There will be also uh, uh, a Devi temple. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this is uh, the interesting thing about the female uh, deities uh, residing in um, uh, in the area is that they actually their uh, their lives and their stories resemble the lives of the women living in the villages, because when they uh, leave their houses uh, or their temples, uh, what is being said is that they that they leave their sorias, their mother-in-law's house, and they go and visit their maikas, which means their parental families. Uh, house or relatives. So it's uh, the stories of the De uh, Devis is very much related to the stories of uh, of the women, actually to the lives of the women. Um, and that's actually what happens when a young uh, when a young wife moves into her um, uh, husband's family. She has a right to visit um, to visit her um, um, natal family, um, not as often as she wants, but quite often in the first few years of their marriage. And then it gets less, uh, the more responsibilities she takes over. So, uh, especially if you're the wife of the eldest son, you're expected to take over a lot of work in the house. Um, as I already said, many Garwali people say that most families see the Gwari as a worker, more as a worker in the beginning than as a family uh, member. And the more a young Gwari works, the more she increases the honor of her natal family. So if you don't work in your new house and their sorias, actually you bring shame to your parents. And this is one of the pressures the young Gwaris at least uh, uh, feel themselves to, uh, to be under. And later, if she works hard and if she has children, this honor will also extend to her and her marital family. But in the first years, it is still their parents' honor that is at stake. Um, so it's... Uh, Ari, <laughs> Namita Gaur wants me to introduce myself again. Okay, I'm going to uh, to look at the comments now. Uh, dear Namita, my name is Karin Polet. I'm a German anthropologist working in Germany, but I've spent uh, many, many years in the Garwal Himalayas uh, I'm um, talking about here. Now, Jagmohan Singh Sajwan said, Bhari's wife, daughter-in-law and elder brother also call his younger brother's wife by the same word, multi-purpose word. Well, uh, the younger brother's wife, I have never heard that called Bwari. Uh, I would, uh, 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 Bwari actually means uh, uh, daughter-in-law or new, uh, um, uh, daughter-in-law and also wife. It's basically a word for the for the young woman who comes here to work, but it, it means that it's a woman who's not been born into this family. Okay, more comments? Okay, now I, uh, <laughs> I'll try and talk about the women again. <clears throat> so um, what I said is that uh, if a young body doesn't do her work uh, the way she's expected, her parents-in-law will, will not only abuse her and reduce the amount of her food because the food is under the control of her uh, mother-in-law usually, but most importantly, they will start talking, talking badly about her parents. So it's, uh, it brings shame to your parents if you don't succeed in working. So, uh, for example, I have, um, I brought you one citation. It's un unfortunately translated. One young woman, Prema, told me about the first time, um, how she remembers her first time when she moved into a family. She says, Yes, that is how it was when we were young. When Buhari did not do her work to her mother-in-law's satisfaction, they used to say to their son, leave her. 
शी इज वर्थलेस शी डज नॉट डू एनी वर्क ये काम बिल्कुल नहीं कर सकती मेरी इन अदर शी इज नो गुड शी डज नॉट डू गुड वर्क In these days, Prema said they did not care about her character. The people only needed someone to do the work, and even if she did her work, they would say she did not do anything. She never does anything. ये बिल्कुल बिखार है काम नहीं करते हैं उसको नहीं चाहिए बाहर का दोस्त हो. In the evening, they would scold her. You have not done this. You have not done that. This work has not been done. Even if the young women worked the whole day, Prema said they were still not satisfied. पूरा संतुष्टि नहीं हुई कभी नहीं हुई. जिसको जितने काम भी कर रही पूरा संतुष्टि कभी नहीं हुई सम पीपल लाइक द बुरारी एंड ट्रीटेड हर लाइक अ डॉटर बट दैट वाज क्वाइट सेल्डम प्रेमा सेड द अदर्स ट्रीटेड हर एज आई जस्ट सेड समबडी हैज टू डू द वर्क समबडी हैज टू सॉर्ट एंड हस द लेंटल्स कट द क्रॉस लुक आफ्टर द एनिमल्स एंड डू ऑल द अदर वर्क द वर्क इन द फील्ड्स इवन इफ दे कैन नेवर प्रोड्यूस इनफ टू फिल एवरीबॉडीज समर but they have to do all the work and in the end others eat what they produce if there's not enough food in the house they have to stay hungry and that's actually something that i always found puzzling the women are actually especially the young women the young buaris they get up at the um, they are the first to get up uh, and they are the last to go to sleep they are always the last to eat so quite often they won't get any uh, any food and all this work is basic most of the work they do is agricultural work but the product of the of the land is uh, really not enough to uh, feed the whole family for the whole year so people do have to buy um more food usually um uh but they it, it, so it's actually about the work itself it's not about the product that much it's about uh, the bodies basically have to work uh young bodari um should never be angry or answer back when scolded even if she thinks that she is unfairly abused she should never talk back to her parents in law or her husband if she does she increases the danger of dishonoring her own parents work is a way to maintain her and her parents honor but it's also the only way to make her own life as uh, comfortable in the future in her sorias most of the time young brothers feel ashamed in their sorias in the beginning no? when you when they just moved there they feel ashamed in front of their male in laws older women make them feel uncomfortable and they are embarrassed to eat young bharis do not like eating the food in their sorias at first because it's like like eating at a stranger's table the food they feel is not theirs and therefore it is shameful to eat it and that's one of the that actually shows or shows the relationship quite quite well in the beginning the food in their mica and their mad is rightfully theirs uh, that's how they feel but they have to earn what they eat in their sorias they have to work for it for the gawali women it's not enough to be a companion of a family's son and even to bear his children to earn the food she eats she is even more uh, but she actually needs to uh, needs to work hard and this is even more important for landless dalit people in shamoli choti jati ke log than for the people who are more rich um ha avinita that's true a girl child is precious for pahari but i'm 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 telling what i'm talking about is the um, is uh, what the people have told me no and what i've uh, uh, what i've observed over many many years of living up uh, there in chamoli and i'm going to talk about the preciousness afterwards um women have to work on the land owners mostly large pot spheres and thus directly earn the food uh, to eat that day radha a young woman told me we have to work on other people's fields they give us some food we go to the brahmans and the rajputs to do their work and they give us grains lentils and rice that is how we eat and how we feed our children for one day's work they give us some wheat some mandwa and some rice when there is no one in the house to earn money then there is no money in this house then we go to the forest and collect firewood and sell this wood in the market that way we can earn at least some money it is important for most women to work for their own food and for their family they could not eat food from anybody without having worked for it and that's their own desire no? because it's they feel it's dishonorable to eat to take food from anybody without having worked for it apart from their native family members of course because they feel that this is shameless behavior uh prema for example could not understand how i could eat at a stranger's house all the time like i lived at people at people's houses and i ate of course i ate uh 
but she couldn't she found that uh, difficult to grasp because um she saw me eating with other families uh being invited to people's houses and uh, ate there but i didn't work that much at, le at least not as much as uh, as they did huh? so she asked me i mean usually and she told me this uh, this is how this whole conversation started she told me that women are actually ashamed to eat at other people's houses or in front of strange men. This is up in Chamuli, in the in rural Chamuli. No? That is also why Buhari works so hard in the beginning. She feels ashamed to eat in their in-laws' house. A Buhari who cannot work will always be ashamed eating. However, the Soryas is not only a place of shame, distress, and subordination. Uh, work is also a source of honor and pride for Garwali women. And that's the one of the reasons why Garwali women have such a high status too, because they are actually in control of a lot of things. Uh, it is not unusual to see village women coming back from a day of hard work, joking with each other, showing off about amount of, the amount of work they have done. They so, show their huge bundle of firework or grass to the other women. I'm sure you've all seen this. Hand it over to another woman to show how heavy it is, jokingly putting it on the back of a little girl only to tell her that she's not a woman yet and therefore she cannot carry such a heavy load. So there are strong people and they're very, very, um, they're very proud of being um, of being so strong and uh, of being the backbones of the family. So, um, uh, so there's a double side to this, no? And things like this happen almost every day in the village, where they show off their ability to work and eat only the food they have earned, which is a, a source of honor, a great source of honor um, of this. So in that way, uh, Udit Nortial has asked us, yes, in that way, the women in Garwal feel that they are much more empowered in comparison to ladies of the plains, because actually they have a lot of, uh, a lot of their lives in their own hands, because they can work, because they, they are not doomed to sit around. They're, they're not, they're not dependent, um, they're not dependent on uh, on their husbands in that way. They, of course, they're in a way dependent, but not for food, not for this, because they they are the ones uh, who keep the family running. They do every uh, all the work. They do everything. That's what they say. They say we are not lazy like the women in the plains. We call them names. We say that they, that's what they told me. What kind of woman is she who does not? Nothing all day. She eats sitting. Bed, bed, kar. Ka, uh, uh, bed, bed, kar, khana karte hai. She eats without having worked for it, which is for them very dishonorable. So that's what they say. We do not like them so well because, uh, you know, we do not like sitting around ourselves. We do not like to let the day pass by like this. We would rather work and rest a little bit and then work again. When we start to worry about the next thing we have to do, when we sit down, we need our work. Day and night, that is what we think about. That's what they say. <clears throat> okay, Dani Gupta, I'm going to answer your question a little later. He's asking about uh, techniques in Uttarakhand handicraft and bring it into our markets. Uh, I think that uh, some of them would be. Um, and the difference between Rungpa and Garwali women, uh, yes, of course, there's a difference between Rungpa and Garwali women because uh, there's a different, there are different ideas of how to live good lives no? that uh, the Garwali uh, um, Hindu women uh, share amongst each other uh, as compared to the, I think they're more empowered. Uh, but I didn't work with Rungpa women that, that much. And Vibha Joshi asked the question whether there's pride priced amongst this community. Uh, there used to be, um, and that's connected to uh, a formerly very high status of the women in Garwal because they worked so hard. They were actually worked quite a bit. But it has changed over the last, I would say, 50 years. I've actually published an article about this. Um, I can send you, I'll send you the article. That's just come out, I think, last year, where I'm talking about changing normativities of um, pride price uh, and the um, uh, Kanyadan uh, weddings and why uh, 
there are various views connected to this which um, uh, marks uh, the status of a woman. But now, before the time is already over, my God, I'd like to talk about the Dhyanis. I talked a lot about the suffering of women, but now I'd like to talk about Dhyanis because uh, there's also a part of um, uh, Garwali women where they have a high status, an absolutely high status, um, and, and a ritually high status as well. So they play uh, Dhyanis uh, means the daughter of a village who's been married out, and you become a um, Dhyani. First of all, you have a right as a, a married woman in Galwal, you always have a right to visit your natal family, as long at least as your uh, father and mother are still alive, and you are usually have a right to your brother's uh, house, to visit your brother's house as well. Um, and you usually, and you're obliged to, to, to give, the family is obliged to give uh, uh, her daughter-in-law uh, baskets of sweets and clothes um, and presents to her natal family, and they're supposed to send them out quite often. Um, and that's related to the families in Garwal. When they get married, to, when two people get married, the families are actually uh, quite on an equal level. So unlike in the plains where you often have um, the uh, family of the women being in a slightly uh, uh, slightly less um, high um, uh, status as the, the family of the men in Garwal, it's very important for many families to, to, to perform also their, their equality, that they're on an equal level. So they need to honor that uh, that relationship, you know, that that kin relationship that they've uh, made at marriage. That this has become uh, is something of of equal partners, sort of. You know? And the dhyanis remain also of ritual importance uh, to the out marriage, uh, to the to the village where they were born, uh, because they have a special relationship usually with the bumi aldevdas. So they need uh, a lot of, for a lot of the rituals that are going on in Garwal, uh, whether it be big, big, uh, um, big festivals or smaller family rituals, you usually need, um, or very, very often need, uh, need your sister or your, uh, your outmarried daughter to come back. Um, and because of that, not only because of that, but also because she has a, a different status in her parents' house, she is also entitled uh, to eat as much as she wants. So this is why I talk so much about food. Um, and many of the songs about mothers and the relationship between daughters and their mothers are about the longing of a body, the longing of a woman to go back to her mother's house. Um, I'd like to, I can't sing, so I'd read you one of the songs that I collected while I've done my fieldwork. Um, uh, Anjali Tapila actually has uh, published a book about uh, women's songs in neighboring um, uh, in uh, in neighboring Kumaung. Okay, I'm trying to read this. Uh, it's in Garwali. Let me know if you if I should also read it in English afterwards. Malaika ban jala yad kariya meri ya bhagwani me tum bai boliya meri malaika ban jala yad kariya meri ban bali nag bali halkali bulaka kanyali lagade mere med ko mulaka ya bhagwani me tum. Bai me bolia meri malaika bandala yat karia meri. Ya bagwani med tum bai ma bolia. Timali ko pad meji, timali ko pad. Kabi din sachi kolu ma ko din you bad. Maji ma ko din you bad. Boti jala agenda maji, boti jala agenda. Sorias kalog meji ni renda bond. It basically talks about uh, um, a woman who's, uh, they usually sing it while they are working, uh, and she sings, I translated, Oh lucky friend, if you go to the forest, remember me. Oh lucky one, if you're going to your natal place, convey my message to my mother. If you go to my Malay's forest, Malaika Ban, remember me. Your nose is wonderful, your ears are pretty, and your bulak is moving beautifully. If you meet anybody from my med, convey my message to my mother. If you go to my Malai's forest, remember me there. If you go to my med, convey my message to my mother. 
Will I ever eat rice from my mother's hands again? Um, she will always have rice for me in the cupboard. Yeah, it's about memories to the mat, and it's also it's related to the food, no, to the food sharing and the the food they would get, um, which is also a symbol of love uh, that you can actually go to your mother's house as long as she lives and always ask for food, which you can't do in your Soryas because there you actually have to uh, work uh, to get the food. Um, and the Dhyanis are also are not only this is so it's an uh, it's uh, a status they have in their in their natal place, um, but they also there are some of the rituals uh, I'd like to talk to um, uh, talk about. Uh, for example, I've uh, the the new book uh, I've written is about a, a deity. Also, it's near Gopeshwar, uh, the region of Gopeshwar, where um, the days small deities uh, they leave their temples. Uh, once in a generation, roughly, um, and they have uh, when they they um, they have a pilgrimage uh, that goes around a certain area where they visit uh, the Dhyanis villages. So they visit the Dhyanis in their soryas. They go and visit them there, and if the Dhyani uh, offers enough, gives enough offerings, uh, they'll also have um, a long ritual performance for them. Um, but then when they come to their home village again, the, uh, the, the deities, when they have the big returning festival, the, all the dhyanis, there's one day where all the dhyanis need to be invited and they're all fed. And the, 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 the nishan of the deity, and you've probably seen this, uh, the nishan is basically a wooden pole with the brass mask on top, is dancing along with the dhyanis and is renewing his relationship to the outmarried uh, daughters. And without that, he cannot return to his temple. So the, the dhyanis are very, very important um, also um, for the relationship of the people to their uh, deities. Okay, Udit Nordjal is asking me, Pahar um, is a caste society, do women of lower and upper caste face the same type of problem or are there any differences? Well, um, as I said in the beginning, the um, uh, a lot of the stories that are told are choti jati ki logon ki kahaniyon hai. But women in Garhwal are mostly women, so they uh, the pattern is the same. A lot of uh, whether you are Rajput or Brahmin women, what you have to do to maintain your honor is work, and it's uh, it's work on the fields. The Brahmin women work as much on the fields as do the choti jati ki log. Um, but of course, there are differences, uh, and the differences are rather uh, social. Um, you know, where can I go? Where am I invited? Uh, which temples can I actually um, enter, and which am I not allowed to enter? So it's uh, which is not that important actually for the everyday life of women because they usually do not want to leave or are not allowed or should not leave their their broader village area anyway because it's uh, supposed to be more dangerous. Uh, I'm not sure how the, you're translating. Okay, I Vinita Sharma. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, well, unfortunately, the casteism, uh, I would say at the time when I started my work there, the casteism was lower, and but it's, uh, it's been uh, rising, unfortunately. And that has something to do with the overall uh, development that happened uh, in India. I can't really go into uh, I, Yeah, it's very difficult to explain it. That's very uh, complicated. So the casteism, of course, is there. If you look at the role players, very, very important people uh, for all the rituals happening all over the area. Without the dole, none of the big rituals would happen. happen. Yet, when they travel, they're not fed by the, by the villagers uh, as well. They're fed, but they have to, um, they have to stay outside of a certain uh, area. They're not allowed into the temple. They're not allowed near the deity, even though they're so important to worship. Him or her. So uh, unfortunately, I cannot say that the, uh, that casteism doesn't exist. Um, 
Okay, I obviously missed some of the questions. Okay, you've asked, Sargam Mehta asked how marriages are arranged and how the bodies are selected. Um, This is, of course, changing. I think it's changing all over India, so it's changing in Gadwal as well. But usually, this is like social networking. When you when your daughter is uh, uh, is born or your son is born, you start making connections with family that would be eligible and who have children the same age. Uh, I think that's true for uh, a lot of societies, and not not only in India and not only Gadwal as well. Um, and then when they come into marriageable age, which means at the start, I mean. When I started my research, that meant the girls around 17. Now this has probably risen because uh, um, the focus uh, people expect people to be more educated. So they're probably around 21 now uh, after they've done their first graduation BA. Um, people start looking uh, for eligible families and it should be families who have uh, the right jati. Um, uh, and who live uh, not too far and not too close. Um, and there, how are they arranged? Uh, this is arranged through informal networks, I would say mostly. It's women talking to other women at big festivals and, um, uh, and family gatherings. Uh, and then uh, family visits are made to start negotiations and talking uh, uh, at each other's place. Sometimes, if they're very progressive and very educated, then once the families have agreed that they like each other, the um, uh, the couple are allowed to meet and then have the last uh, word. Sometimes people get married anyway, um, but usually um, uh, a lot of young women would say that they would obey their family's wishes unless he's very terrible and the other way around, of course. Then uh, Sargam is asking, did you come across any cases of rebellion of women within the family? That's a difficult question. Uh, rebellion towards parents, yes, that I've seen, like uh, young women who really wanted to have an education, pushing this through. This happens. Uh, as I said, my first Hindi teacher in Srinagar was a woman who just moved out of her family and started uh, work as a Sanskrit teacher at the university. Um, uh, I've also seen uh, acts of rebellion uh, among married women, but this it's very difficult, or used to be at least. Um, um, and once you're married and you want to rebel there, you can run away, but it's, that's a little sad because a lot of the women who want to rebel see their, the only way for rebellion is uh, suicide. And a lot of uh, the young women talk about going into the river as their last resort. So uh, that's a little bit of a sad question. But of course you have people moving out, uh, but these are exceptions. The thing is, if you live in rural Galois, being different, uh, let's face it, is very difficult. And that's true in Germany and villages as well. If you're, if you're different in a, in, in, in a small village where everybody knows each other, that's not a lot of fun. Yeah, okay. Vinita Sharma said, yeah, women cannot afford to rest even if they're pregnant. Yes, that's true. They don't. Well, they can't afford to rest. Even if they could afford, it would be dishonorable for them. So they don't want to do that. So a lot of women tell the proud stories of how they delivered their child right on the fields. And that's stories where they perform their uh, strength ne? and how, uh, how strong they are and how, uh, how honorable they are. Okay. Are there intercaste marriages? Um, I've met a few people who did that, but they usually converted, a lot of them converted to Christianity and moved out. So like in a lot of other places, you shouldn't expect people to take that very easy. But there's not that kind of caste violence that we know from other places uh, in India, that I have never witnessed in all the 18 years of working in Galwa, I've never seen that. But intercaste marriage is a little difficult. Is there any similarity between your native culture and Galwali culture by any chance? Yeah, there's lots of similarities. Um, maybe not the woman 
honor, but the connections to the family are very important. Um, uh, that you that idea that you know you have a hierarchy within the family and that you should honor your parents and have a strong loving connection to your parents and Garwali people in general are the most um, uh, I'm hoping that some of my friends are, are listening I'm not sure but the friends I've made there some of them are my best friends still and uh, uh, that's mainly because uh, once they start uh, accepting you into the family you'll never get out that's always you'll always be part of the family uh lokesh ori is asking could i comment on women's relations with the rivers um okay i'm trying to comment on that the women's relations with the rivers um is that sad side uh, you have a relationship with the river because it's the last resort if you really cannot do anything the uh, that's what they say the ganga will help you because it carries you right into haridwa and it will be a relief um but the river of course is also um 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 it's it's like the land something that uh, that connects th that you're connected to as a woman you relate you connected you you and your body are connected to the land that you work on and the water that comes from the river of the uh, villages near the river is um life-giving um, and there are lots of songs that people um, have uh, about the rivers as well Vinita Sharma talks about uh, that they draw the strengths from this and have a mind of their own yes that's true they do have a mind of their own but it's very difficult uh, for them in the beginning no because it's a, quite a struggle to become a powerful woman now once you have a son a grown son who's been married you, you they're very powerful people. They're very powerful in the village, and then they become, uh, they can go into politics, they can basically do everything. The only problem is if it doesn't work out, if you don't succeed in that kind of hard work, if you get sick, or if you only have uh, female children, life may become a little difficult. Is there a bond between women from different castes who are wedded into the same village, or is there no interaction? Oh no, there's a lot of bonds, yes. Uh, the women, um, thank you, Riba. Uh, women are helping each other out in the fields. They usually, what they do is they work together on the fields. So, uh, like for example, in in the spring, I would call it spring when the uh, after the winter when the fields need to be cleared of all the stones. Usually, what they do is that all the women of one village start with one of the fields um, and empty all of the fields out together. On the, and that doesn't matter which kind of caste uh, that is. That it's uh, the village women are connected because they are village women. Uh, there are, of course, restrictions um, as to the interactions within the village, but they, um, there's a there's a strong bond between the women who live in one village because they're all buharis and they are all dependent on each other. Uh, that's what happens. They actually help each other out. Yes, and I know I'm aware of Helen Lambert's uh, um, study. Yeah, it, that's very interesting. That's what I tried to say in the beginning that they are actually more connected by being women um, than by being of different castes. Although, of course, uh, the women of, of the uh, uh, lower, uh, the Choti Jatis are, would be stopped by women of higher status to enter certain ritual crowns. So the, the ritual uh, distinction is there, but the women have their own connections. Now, Mr. B. Meganathan is asking, is there a problem of honor killing of female infanticide? Uh, honor killing, I've never even read about. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I've never see, seen, I've heard of people running away and doing intercast marriages and doing things that people are not uh, happy about, but it's uh, honor killing I've never heard. That's really something that I, uh, that I wouldn't expect, at least not in Chamuli, not in the rural areas of Garal. Uh, people, people are just not, they're not aggressive enough, they're not violent enough to do that. I've, uh, maybe I have a romantic view there, correct me if I'm wrong, but that I've never seen. Female infanticide is, a, um, is also something that has not, uh, that, that doesn't have a long history. Uh, it's not done very often. Um, of course, there are abortions, uh, yeah, 
uh, aborting uh, attempts to abort female uh, fetuses, but even that be, uh, because the uh, women used to have a very high status in Garwal, uh, they still have a higher status than in the plains, but this has gradually changed. I would say um, over the last 50 years, the, uh, the status is not as high anymore as it used to be. It's what they said, uh, the, the women told me to like, uh, 50 years ago, the, the generation before, like say in the 1950s, people used to plant uh, certain trees or celebrate when a girl was born because it, uh, it meant wealth for the family and you, yeah, hard workers. And that has changed. But female infanticides are not, and you can see it at the ratio too, it's actually okay in Garwal. You don't have a, you don't seem to have a strong incidence of female infanticides. Vinita Sharma has talked about the connections about all castes. Yes, thank you. Yes, women have connections across all castes. Yeah. Because of doing away with pride prize, Viba, are you asking this? Well, no, it's connected to the changing status of the women. The doing away with pride prize, the women, pride prize, the women talk about this as a more honorable way. The dowry wedding is seen as a more honorable way of the women to get married. Why? Because now they bring their own wealth. That's connected to what I talked about before. You know, if you if you have that, uh, if your honor is connected to working for food, uh, you also you come into a family as a more honorable person if you bring your own furniture, your own stuff, your own money. Yeah. So, and that's a change. Of course, we would see that differently uh, as intellectuals, but that's how a lot of women, a lot of women connect uh, dowry weddings with high status uh, um, weddings as well, and the high status in their families. It enables them basically to be to have more agency as a young boy, because they they come with a higher status. Oh, thank you, uh, Sakshi Dana. In light of male out migration, how has this impacted women? That's a very important question. I should have talked about this. Um, a lot of the, this is what I said. A lot of the um, a lot of the uh, conflicts that are happening uh, in families is not conflicts between men and women, but it's usually conflicts in the higher in the female hierarchies. And a lot of this also has to do because of the that the women are alone in that house. Because, uh, and it's still the case, now I don't know what COVID-19 does to the situation, but it's still the case that a lot of um, men, and that's true uh, as far as I know, all castes go and work outside. Um, now, Bombay is the farthest I've known from Garwal, but I also know, no, that's not true. I know that in Heidelberg, some Garwali uh, young men are working, so they're out migrated even to Germany to work in restaurants. But you would a lot of young men would go out to earn money. Why? Because you know there's just no, not much opportunity to earn money in Galwal uh, itself. You, know, you all know uh, rural Galwal. There's there, there's le very little opportunity to to get any cash into the family, which is why a lot of a lot of men uh, work outside, and the women are alone in their families, which causes um, lots of problems. Um, of course, because the, basically the women run the house uh, amongst themselves. It also means it's very difficult to have children if your husband isn't isn't uh, there. But it also means that all the hierarchy is actually um, uh, negotiated uh, amongst the women themselves. Gancham is asking, um, how much justified is it for the women to accept all the sufferings after being the backbone of the family? Well. That's a question I've asked myself very often too. Um, and uh, if you look around in, in rural Galval, it's actually it's very often the case that even though if the men are there, it's not their role to work that hard on the field. What they do is plowing the fields. That's a male's job. But actually, their job would be to uh, to earn cash to get money into the family. But the opportunities are very low, which means. A lot of the men, especially of the poorer families, uh, are very depressed because they can't live up to their own uh, responsibilities, which is not a nice situation for them too, and they can't take over the work of their uh, women because it's female work. Um, and as I said, the women um, consider themselves uh, very strong, um, and the sufferings 
to them is simply part of being a woman. They're being born as women, and that means that you have to suffer. Uh, that's what that's at least what they told me. So there's very little rebellion because syndicato essay were essay hai or upavali ke hath mein hai to hum aurat hai to aurat ki zindagi aise hai. That's what they're saying. What makes me stick to this community in any aspect? Are that's a difficult question. <laughs> uh well, I said it's um, as I said, it's because I've made a lot of connections that have that made me attached to Garwal, and um, uh, I find life in Garwal very interesting. And what I see is that there's a lot of scope for for the future in the Himalayas because the people there, even though they suffer a lot and they're very poor, uh, in many ways it's a much better life than people, even the rich people in Delhi live, if you think of in terms of uh, in terms of air pollution, if you think in terms of healthy food, and basically all, um, even if they have to work so hard, um, what they have is a very strong connection to their land and to the uh, to the place uh, they live in and the love for the land and their deities is just uh, I find it incredibly interesting and uh, I can learn a lot from them in continuation with remittances from males working outside the women still do agricultural activities do they prefer to keep doing it or leave the lands fellow no women that's what I uh, I think a lot of the women do still do the agricultural activities because it's their work anyway is their work, they need the males of the family to do the plowing, and the rest of the agricultural work is women's work. Does dowry make the status of women and their family? Yes, at least that's what the women uh, uh, are telling me, that uh, it's it's not the dowry that we are talking about in the plans. Yeah, it's, uh, it's basically, um, things for the household, there may be a little money, but it's not extensive dowry as that makes uh, that uh, makes the family of the uh, the natal family totally poor, but what you bring is a bed, uh, a cupboard, uh, maybe a fridge at these days if you have electricity in your house. Uh, basically stuff that you need for your household, and that means that you bring you the stuff you need in your new house, which means that you come into the new family more honorable. Now Gansham is telling me, thank you, ma'am, which probably means that my time has run out. I thank you all very much for your, um, uh, for being here, for, for coming uh, and interacting with me. It was a pleasure. This is the first time I've done it on Facebook Live. Um, I enjoyed it a lot and I'm hoping very much that we'll all see each other very soon again. Uh, I would have been in, uh, in Deladun actually in April. And we are still hoping to meet in September. You see. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Okay. I'm just quickly going to write my email address. 